In this New Worlds weapon video, we're going to be taking a look at the musket weapon. This is one of the ranged weapons in the game. This weapon scales off dexterity and intelligence a little bit better with dexterity. So if you're trying to make like a predominantly ranged build uh, with muskets, then you're going to want to invest more heavily into dexterity than intelligence. The advantages of the musket over the bow are that uh, the range is significantly longer, meaning it's easier to hit enemies from further away. This is particularly good in PvP, but can also be very good in questing if you want to stay at a safe distance. And it allows you to hit targets a little bit more easily on the move because bullets land a little bit faster than arrows. So there's a little bit more control there. The downsides are that it's a little bit longer in between shots. It seems like there's a minimum distance to fire at, meaning like if enemies are right up on top of you, your barrel kind of sticks through them and doesn't hit them sometimes. So you definitely need to back away if you're trying to fire. They can't be quite on top of you. They can be fairly close but not directly on top of you. Just like bows, you're going to have to craft or purchase or find ammo for this weapon. You're going to need to make cartridges. Just like arrows, these damages on these cartridges uh, varies from, from one to one, meaning that they're going to be more damaged the higher tier of ammo that you use. So as you progress through the game, you're going to get more and more multiplier on the ammo, meaning you're going to need to keep upgrading your ammo because these are level locked. So you can't use like the best ammo in the game at the low level or something like that. So as you hit these thresholds, you're going to want to upgrade your ammo in order to deal increased damage just like arrows. Probably the biggest downside of the musket is the fact that it's harder to craft this ammo than it is to craft arrows. And um, that's mostly because you need saltpeter in order to make gunpowder if you're not buying it off the auction hall or something like that. And sometimes, depending on where you start, that is located a very, very far distance away. Sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll spawn in a region because the region you spawn in is random and one that's got a lot of it. But if not, you might have to travel two kilometers in order to get some. And that's a long way to go at the very beginning of the game if you're just trying to shoot that rifle you got like 30 minutes into the game. However, what is really nice is that the saltpeter can be found in caves around the map, very specific caves, and it goes a long way. Meaning like if you just find a couple nodes, you're going to have plenty of gunpowder in order to make plenty of ammo. I suggest just making a shit ton of it. Uh, then you don't have to run back to that distance uh, from that location. And if you get like two kilometers away and you get the stuff that you need you might as well just like let something kill you and dead spawn all the way back in town instead of running all that way back so things to know about the musket are that you get critical hits if you shoot players or enemies in the head so you definitely want to aim for the head when possible in order to get increased damage additionally if you dodge while you're in the middle of a reload animation it will cancel the reload so you want to make sure you finish reloading before you dodge or you're going to continuously be trying to reload so if you get into a situation where you need to dodge out of the way because a bunch of enemies or players are on you uh, you're kind of screwed if your weapon is not reloaded. This is not the case with the bow, uh, so another advantage of the bow, that you can quick fire a bow without having to reload like this, so that's not a problem. Another thing worth mentioning is that you do exclusively thrust damage with this weapon type, meaning that undead are resistance to this damage type, uh, and animals are weak to it, so it makes it primarily the weapon to use if you want to hunt animals, mostly because a lot of them are mobile as well, meaning you can gun them down rather easily because this weapon is very good at hitting mobile targets at range. So quests where you need to hunt animals, this is a very, very good weapon type to use. And the exception to the thrust damage is the Sticky Bomb ability, which actually does fire damage. Moving along to the skill trees, on the left-hand side you have the Sharpshooter skill tree. This is all dedicated to dealing damage at range with your musket. So if you're going to be someone who, like, you know, shoots players or enemies with a musket regularly, you're definitely going to want to invest in this trait. Additionally, the capstone here, the Sniper ability, allows you to actually zoom even further, so you can shoot enemies or players from even further away. So if that's something that you plan on doing, you want to be like sort of a sniper character, you'll definitely want to make sure you take that capstone. The first ability that you can gain in the sharpshooter tree is called Powder Burns. This affects your next shot that you fire, makes it deal slightly more damage and also set burning on the target. The burning does a lot of damage, so this is a really good uh, debuff to do on players or, or enemies. Power Shot works very, very similarly. It uh, loads into your rifle and then your next shot does 150% damage. This is a lot of damage usually. The, the rifle actually hits really hard or the musket hits really hard. So this is a really good buff. And it's something that you should like queue up if you don't, you know, that and powder burns depending on which one you're using or if you're using both of them, queue up one of them. You should always have it on your weapon if you're running around or you're fighting. As soon as it comes off cooldown, pop that baby onto your weapon. What's really interesting about powder burns, power shot, and stopping power is that these buffs don't expire, not even if you swap weapons, meaning that you know, they'll start cooling down the second you pop it into your rifle. So there's no reason not to have one of them always in your rifle because if you use power shot and it's already cooled down, the second you fire, you can reload it into your rifle again and get back-to-back -back power shots. Or maybe you want to get back-to-back -back stopping powers or whatever it is you want to do. 
you should always keep one of these buffs in your rifle and you should just get in the habit of once you see it off cooldown, pop it in there and let it start cooling down again. The last ability in the tree is called Shooter's Stance, and this effectively lets you like take a knee and can't move, but during this time you reload much, much faster. So if you know you're going to have to make several shots to take a target down, uh, or that a target moves quickly, this is a great thing to use when it's off cooldown, because it allows you to fire so fast, and sometimes you can kill targets before they can even get to you using it. So it's definitely one I highly recommend if you're going to play like a sniper type build, or one that primarily focuses on ranged attacks. You're definitely going to want to use this on harder enemies so you can get several shots quickly off. Also note that it does work with your other buffs, so the first shot while you're kneeling will use your buff if you buffed it up with like power shot or something like that. The Trapper Tree has a bit of a different focus. It's not so much involved with dealing damage as it is with uh, utility being able to trap targets or dealing damage in other ways. The Stopping Power ability uh, works much like Power Shot and Powder Burns. You load it into your weapon, it stays in there, and then it allows you to knock a target back. It's good for, you know, shooting something that might be charging you, getting up close to knock it backward, giving you more time for another shot. Works particularly good with your shooter stance, because maybe you knock them back with that first shot, giving you more time to get off your next two before a target gets close to you. Traps is a really good ability to throw down in front of you if you know an enemy is going to be pulled. Uh, a lot of enemies charge straight at you when you fire at them once. So throwing this down, like maybe three or four feet in front of you, uh, allows you to just stand there and shoot when the enemy gets stuck in the trap you can keep firing and it makes it a lot easier to get headshots which deal critical damage uh, particular if like humanoid type enemies uh, are running directly at you sticky bomb does incredible damage and it does fire damage instead of thrust as i mentioned before but it's incredibly hard to use as a very short throwing range you can aim way high in the air if you want to arc it very far but it's hard to accurately stick it to anything uh, when you can't see where you're throwing it so it's one of those where you're probably going to use it in tandem with traps. You'll trap something, then you'll throw a sticky bomb on them, and you'll keep fighting um, and do a lot of damage in a very quick burst. One passive I also want to bring your attention to in this tree is the tactical reload ability. This makes it so that you reload via dodging once every six seconds. This is huge because, as I mentioned before, when you're reloading and you dodge, it resets your animation. However, if you have this, that won't be the case once every six seconds. And a lot of times, that's all you need to get that last shot off the finishing enemy that was charging you. So this is definitely a must-have no matter what sort of musket build you're going for. Because the musket scales off of dexterity and intelligence, uh, you have a wide variety of weapons to choose from um, when matching it with something. It really depends on how you want to play. Some people might want to use like a staff to go with it and play pure range, which you can do if you pump more intelligence than dexterity. And others might want to do some sort of like rapier mix or a spear mix with their musket in order to have a mix of ranged and melee combat. These all work. I would definitely suggest that if you're going to be a PvP player, that you don't go 100% ranged unless you're playing in a big group. Because you're going to be in melee combat at some point if you're playing in small to medium groups, medium-sized groups, and if you don't have a melee option, you're going to get hosed just using a musket. Same thing goes for like questing, if you're doing quests or dungeons, you're going to want to have, uh, I, I wouldn't even recommend using a ranged weapon in dungeons to be honest, I think it's more effective to melee, but if you want to use one you can. But if you're questing and you go into a, a camp of enemies uh, to do some quest activity there and you pull like three or four enemies and you don't have a melee weapon, you're going to be in a really bad spot. So I suggest going with something like a spear or maybe the rapier and matching that with your uh, musket. I think that's just generally the better way to do it. Or you can mix the, you know, staff or ice gauntlet, something like that as well. Those both have AoE. Something with AoE is definitely needed. One thing I do want to mention too is the armor you should be wearing while using a ranged weapon like a bow or musket or maybe a staff is uh, light armor. The reason for this is you gain plus 20% damage. If you're talking about hitting something from far away before it gets to you, you want all the damage you can get. You're not banking on getting hit. So going all in on that light armor to get increased damage is going to make every shot of yours count, and you're definitely going to want that. The musket is probably one of my favorite weapons in the game. It's just fun to play around with. It's fun in PvP, and you can get groups together of all muskets, and the sound effects are great. So I highly recommend you try out this weapon. Stay tuned for more weapon guides for New World as we go through all 11 weapons, and if you have more questions about the game, make sure to drop by our Twitch channel, or you can check out our New World wiki. So what do you guys think of the musket? Is it something that you like to use in PvE or PvP? How do you use it? What are your tips about the musket? Let us know in the comments below.